The black man who was handcuffed and tased in the back by a West Alabama police officer plans to file a multi-million dollar lawsuit against the department. The video of Micah Washington's arrest has gone viral on social media. Folks are calling for the firing of the officer and charges against Re Reform Alabama police officer Dana Elmore for what took place on December 2nd. That took place in Pickens County, about 40 miles west of Tuscaloosa. Joining us right now is Leroy Maxwell Jr., the attorney representing Micah Washington. Leroy, glad to have you here. Uh, so I want to do this here. I want to play the video, but I want I need you to explain to us what happened before this. Now, first and foremost, folks who, who haven't seen this, this is the video that has gone viral of this officer tasing Micah Washington after he's already handcuffed and he's complying. Right there on the front of the car. No, I wanted the audio up. Stay still. I don't got, I ain't doing shit, but I got gun right there. I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm saying what you saying. Oh, yeah, fuck. I'm not, oh, my God. Fuck up. Okay, okay, okay. I'm down, down. Oh, my fuck. Oh, my God. 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 You want it again? No, man. Shut the fuck up. You was big and bad. Shut your bitch ass up. Wow. Uh, Leroy, uh, first and foremost, who was shooting the video? Right. Uh, thank you so much for having us. That was uh, Micaiah's younger brother, uh, Shaquem, who was shooting the uh, video. Uh, there were three of them that were pulled over, or were not pulled over. They were on the side of the road trying to repair a tire. Uh, on a vehicle, and uh, fortunately, his brother whipped out his camera, uh, and we saw what we saw. But leading up to that, uh, it was just as bad. So they were changing a tire. Yeah, they were changing a tire, and, and as far as I know, being black and changing a tire tire is not illegal, not yet anyway. Uh, but that's exactly what they were doing: changing the tire on the side of the road. Officer came up on them, uh, asked what they were doing. Uh, Micaiah made it clear we're obviously changing a tire here uh there's nothing illegal that we're doing at all why do you want my id she demanded the id without asking or articulating any sort of uh, uh criminal activity eventually micaiah did apply uh comply with giving her his id uh but he decided he was going to take out his phone and record as everyone should do film the police as soon as she saw that and he hit the button to record she immediately tased him the first time so, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, okay. So they and that was just the first time. And then you're right. What you're seeing is the second tasing. And so, so he got tased time, twice. He got tased twice. Right. And so, uh, she tased him when he took out his phone to start recording and he went to the ground. You see his phone beside him. Uh, she handcuffs him. Uh, and then you see his brother start filming as he's being lifted up off the ground after he's been handcuffed uh, and being taken to the front of her hood. Uh, and that's when the sadistic just uh, assault and battery occurred at that point. All right. So um, then you hear the language she uses against him. So we hear right. that. Um, then he gets arrested. Now, now, here's what I really find to be interesting. Um, walk us through, for people who don't know, walk us through what they charged him with. All right, so this is where it gets, uh, it gets wild, all right? So they charged him with a few things. They charged him with trafficking, uh, cocaine laced with fentanyl, an ex-felon in possession of a firearm, possession of marijuana, resisting arrest, obstruction of government operation, all right? Okay, so, they so, charged so, him so, so let's, let's walk through each one of those. Yeah. So what was the first one again? Trafficking, you know, uh, what you see in the movies, all that other jazz. So he was trafficking. so trafficking, uh, lace with fentanyl. Okay, cocaine lace fentanyl. Now right. we're, we're we're watching the video here. So where did they claim this cocaine was? So according to what officers uh, told him at the when he was over in booking in the jail, that the officer pulled cocaine, a bag of cocaine laced with fentanyl, 
out of his pocket right before he pu uh, she pulled the gun out of his pocket. And but, so we but see we in the video, video right here. That's the problem. She wasn't aware of the video. So the gun. And so hold on. she wasn't. So uh, she wasn't aware. So how close were they standing? She wasn't where they were. They were shooting. So he was a little bit further away. He was zoomed in. Got the brother it. was zoomed in on the video, uh, but she was not aware uh, that uh, that the brother was filming. So I'm uh, watching the video. They, we play the video right now. She pulls the gun out of his right pocket. At no point does she reach into his left pocket. At no point does she reach back into his pocket. She literally pulls nothing out of his pocket except the gun. Exactly. So That's where these nothing guns come but from. No, that's what we want to know. And so, of course, he gets bonded in on a half a million dollar bond because he's in there for trafficking. Uh, no way he can make that bond. No way his family could get him out. It's absolutely absurd. Uh, but then the video comes out. Uh, his brother then lets the video out uh, and it hits the airwaves hard. It streams. It goes viral. And then all of a sudden, conveniently, uh, the state moves to dismiss the charges for trafficking uh, the fentanyl, uh, they claim that, you know, there was a road test done and it came back as positive as fentanyl. Further testing showed that it was not fentanyl. I've, I've done this sort of work for over a decade in criminal defense and civil rights. I've never once, once seen uh, a forensic test come back on toxicology that fast outside of a field test. Uh, but apparently they tested, did more testing, came back as not fentanyl, and they dropped that charge conveniently. In addition, uh, the felon charge, uh, ex-felon in possession of a firearm, that charge just disappeared. Uh, I didn't see a motion to dismiss it. I didn't see a judge or an order to dismiss it. That charge just up and vanished in smoke. Wow. And now, so, here's, right, here's the yeah. deal. Is he an ex-felon? Absolutely not. Wait, wait, hold Never on, been hold charged, on. arrested, How is a man charged as being an ex-felon when he's not an ex-felon? Uh, that's that's exactly our point. They in a hustle and a bustle to try to come up with charges. Uh, they they just start throwing charges at them. How do you go through the process of deciding someone is a felon enough to put felony possession of an ex, ex felon in possession of a firearm charge against someone? That's a process that you have to go through to ensure they're a felon. Um, Clearly, they either didn't go through the process, didn't think through the process, or they just threw charges up against them, hoping it would stick. And, of course, that charge is no longer there because he was not a felon whatsoever. And it's our expectation that the remaining charges will ultimately be dismissed as well. So, I mean, what, what, what's astounding here is it's just, man, just, just, just pile it on, pile it on. And we see this. We see this happen all the time to African Americans, and let's just be real. If that this video does not exist, uh, first mm -hmm. of all, now this officer, it, does she wear a body cam, uh, a body camera? Now, looking at the video that the brother took, it looks like she, I couldn't tell if she was wearing a body cam or if that was just uh, a her, radio uh, or something. microphone, a radio, right, exactly. I couldn't tell, but we do know from Micaiah when he was in the vehicle, he said the dash cam was completely unplugged. Uh, he saw wires hanging from it, but nothing was plugged in. And so we're not aware if she was wearing a, a body camera or not. Uh, but I imagine uh, if she had been wearing a body cam, uh, that that function would have you know, been turned off or just not available. Um, thank God his brother was filming or else he'd be still behind bars, from my calculation, on a half a million dollar bun rotting away. So, okay, all right. So the police department charged him with these offenses. Then when it goes right. to the DA, they realize, uh, we got a problem. And so they just start dropping the stuff left and right. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. They realize we got a problem. Uh, we're getting our timeline together. We know even when he was initially booked in the jail, uh, we have recordings of the family talking to the jailers. They said that he was only there for a failure to appear for a traffic ticket in another city. They weren't. They didn't know about any other charges. And then an hour later, all these charges come flooding in, and then the video gets released. And now they're slowly backtracking and pulling away these charges once I believe the powers to be in the DA's office is realizing what's going on here. Uh, I think you got a situation where you got uh, a rogue cop 
uh, who's used to being a cowboy cowgirl out there getting away with whatever she wants to get away with. Unfortunately, uh, the brother was filming, uh, and she ain't getting away from it this time. I mean, I, 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 what, what's still stunning to me is when you look at the, those charges, and I'm going to go back to the drug one, okay? So she mm -hmm. claimed their drugs, okay? Then there was a field test. Now, did the brothers ever stop recording? How long were they out there? Did, did they, were they present, and were they shooting the entire time from the moment uh, help arrived and he's put in the car and taken away? No, they didn't shoot the entire time, but there were multiple officers that showed up, and we believe at least one of those officers is probably going to testify or speak truthfully as far as what happened, because Micaiah and his brother will tell you there was never any sort of field test done. There was no white substance or powdery substance or whatever, phenol, crystals or whatever. There was nothing that was being tested whatsoever in the field. Um, uh, there were no drugs on his person at all. Uh, we don't even know where the marijuana charge came from. Um, and so while there was no video uh, of the entire incident, because at some point uh, the brother put his phone down once uh, he saw uh, an officer coming towards his direction, uh, we don't have a full recording of everything that happened. We do know from my witness account there was absolutely no field test uh, that was done. And, and even in the state's motion to dismiss, it says that a field test was done prior uh, to the arrest. Uh, and we know that the incident with him being on the ground and handcuffed, that all happened within a matter of minutes of the officer first arriving on the scene. Uh, so we don't know where there was time to do a field test. We don't see any drugs. Uh, we don't know about any drugs. And then now, conveniently, the drug charges are gone. Uh, but as Even though the charges are gone, can you, as his attorney, and, and maybe not within the context of the criminal case, maybe you can mm -hmm. do this in the context of the civil case, uh, can you say, produce for me this, these so-called drugs? Man, we are licking our chops. Uh, we are licking our cups. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, not only do you have excessive force claims, not only do you have assault and battery claims, you have deliberate indifference. You have malicious prosecution. You have abuse of process, abuse of power claims here. Uh, and so we plan on filing our lawsuit within the next 30 days, and we're going to use that subpoena power to demand all the evidence. We want to review, examine all physical evidence, where it came from, uh, the chain of custody, everything we wanted. And, you know, we hate that there are criminal charges right now, but trust me, we're going to take advantage of that too because criminal charges provide subpoena power as well. Uh, and so while they're around, I don't know how much longer they're going to exist. Uh, I'm sure we'll be filing motions to dismiss, but while they do exist, we're going to take advantage of it and use every methodology we can under the law uh, to make sure we get answers and that the right people are held accountable. Uh, it, it is just, I mean, the reason all of this uh, is stunning, uh, and, and I say all the time, praise God for this. Amen. Because, one, um, again, if, uh, if, it's if, if it's actually true that the dash cam stuff was unplugged, this is a problem we've seen in Chicago, where cops have destroyed dash cam videos, where cops turn their body cameras off because they don't want themselves being recorded. Uh, and so, you, a absolutely, if his, br if his brother's not there shooting, I mean, th their story, how they frame it, becomes the truth. And it's just, oh, this is a, that's simply another black man uh, claiming he didn't do anything, uh, who just shut up right. and go to prison. Yep, shut up, go to prison. And uh, I, I can't even imagine, you know, I talk to these, my clients every single day, once all throughout the state and the Southeast, uh, that are telling me these sort of things are happening and we're fighting day in and day out trying to prove it. And so I just thank God um, and God's good time and that, you know, the, the, the video footage was there, that his brother was there because he'd just be another brother behind bars uh, waiting two, three years for a trial to come around because there's no way his family is going to make a half a million dollar bond. Uh, and so right now it's, it's time to get him justice. Uh, we're going to turn this narrative around uh, and get accountability. Um, where is Micah right now? 
So Micah's at home right now. And so he just, uh, he was in our office a couple hours ago. Uh, thankfully he's home. Uh, and he's, he's going through it. He's naturally a positive, bright, optimistic, you know, you just, his, he feeds, uh, gives energy to, to everyone. Um, and I told him, don't, don't let this rob you of it. Uh, but right now he's dealing with the first time of his life, depression, uh, dealing with this sort of this traumatic, uh, uh, incident, uh, where he goes in dark rooms and he just wants to sleep, uh, and not come out. He's afraid. Uh, he's worried. He fears for his family that lives still in that county. Will there be some sort of retaliation? Uh, he's going through it right now mentally, but we're going to get him right. Is he, you talked about obviously depression. Is he still mm -hmm. suffering any physical uh, ailments as a result of being tased? You know, when we got him out of jail, we, he was still in the t shirt with the taser holes in the back of his shirt. Man. Um, so, yeah, he's bruised up. Uh, it's tender to the touch. It's a little swelling going on. He's, we got him treated at a medical center. Um, and so physically, uh, he's still going through it. Uh, every time he turns, every time he sits in a chair, lays down, he can feel it. And it just, that memory floods back to the moment where uh, he thought he was going to die. You know, it was one thing the first time being tased, but when he was on the trunk of the car, still saying yes ma'am, still saying no ma'am, being the flight young man that he is, and she is getting off, uh, telling him you want some more, uh, calling him everything you could think of, and continuing to tase him in the back. Uh, it might have lasted for 10 seconds, but for him, it felt like it was 30 days. Uh, he was there forever, and he felt every last jolt of energy. Uh, absolutely uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Leroy, anything else? No, um, again, thank you all for covering this, bringing attention to it. You know, we're out here in the trenches, uh, often in the black belt here in Alabama, uh, and this happens all too often uh, in these small counties. Uh, Pickens County is a former sundown uh, lynching style county uh, where um, some of the most horrible atrocities still occur. And bringing attention to this, putting light on this, uh, means the world uh, to the citizens of Pickens County uh, and to everyone here in Alabama. So we appreciate it. All right. Uh, Leroy Maxwell, Jr., we appreciate it. Thanks a lot.